Welcome to the Clear to Send podcast, a podcast about wireless engineering, where we educate you on Wi-Fi technology, talk about design tips, troubleshooting, interviews, and the tools. Here are your hosts, Roel and Francois. This show is happily sponsored by Metageek. Wi-Fi is awesome when it works, but when it doesn't, the problem is usually a mystery. Unless you have Insider Office by Metageek. Insider Office quickly scans your wireless environment and recommends ideal channel selection to help you make your Wi-Fi awesome and keep it that way. Check out the solutions at metageek.com to get started and get your Wi-Fi working the way you want it to. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Clear to Send podcast. This is episode number 87. And in this episode, we're going to talk about NetScout, who we saw at Mobility Field Day 2, which they were one of the presenters talking about the AirCheck G2 and also about Link Live. But before we get to that episode, I want to say hello to my co-host, Francois. How are you, Francois? I'm very good. Thank you. Happy to be online with you again for a brand new episode. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, we're, we're turning out some good episodes here. I think we'll have quite a few as we review some of the presentations from Mobility Field Day 2. And in case you guys don't know, Mobility Field Day 2, that is an event that's hosted by Tech Field Day, where they bring on uh, what are called delegates, which are people in their respective industry. So this one being mobility, we got a bunch of mobility experts and then uh, they bring in a bunch of presenters who talk about their technologies. So Mobility Field Day 2 had Cape Networks, Miss Systems, Mojo Networks, NetScout, and Nyansa. So today we're going to focus on NetScout and we're going to talk about our thoughts on what came out of that that uh, presentation. So um, Francois, you haven't been to Mobility Field Day yet, have you? No, I follow. I usually follow the live stream. They have a live stream on YouTube mm -hmm. or on their website, and you can just follow it live. And then the, uh, they also have they upload the video afterwards, so you can even watch the event afterwards for free. So I've been following them, um, you know, for a few years now. I don't mm -hmm. know when they started, but it used to be called another well, yeah, name. Right? It used to be called Wireless Field Day. Wireless and, Field Day. Exactly. The first yeah. time I attended was the first name change so i attended uh the year before which was mobility field day one so that was the first time i uh, was able to join this uh, round of delegates and i'm here again for a second time which i uh, just want to thank those guys tech field day uh, for bringing me back on it's a it's a wonderful experience to actually be part of the delegate team and to actually you know interface with with different people in our industry bringing together a lot of great minds and then being able to talk about some of these technologies that that are presented in front of us and get a hands-on feel for it as well and i think that's what the vendor expect as well right they expect your your feedback mm -hmm. uh the experts feedback in order to improve their product i'm yeah. guessing yeah we, yeah we provide our feedback we ask a lot of questions especially questions coming from social media as well so anybody who is watching the live stream or knows that this event is happening, they can su submit their questions and we actually will ask for them during the presentation because we also keep track of the tweets, for example, on social media. And uh, uh, from that point of view as well as afterwards, we we will uh, share what we think about um, the presentation and share that via blog, via you know Twitter, or even in this case, a, a podcast episode. Yeah. That's really good. So when is the next event? Did they tell you? Uh, that hasn't been scheduled yet. I think they are they are still trying to round up some more vendors. So if you guys out there want to see a specific wireless or mobility vendor to present at Mobility Field Day, let us know. Um, you can tweet us at Clear to Send. I actually recommended a few people that I, uh, I want to see, um, especially... Ubiquity, which we had in the last episode. I think it would be great yeah. to have them on. Be, yeah, they have really a lot of great features, a lot of great technology coming out. And as they're trying to get into you know enterprise, I think it'd be great to have them. And I put in a couple other ones that have to do with like point-to-point -point and point-to-multipoint wireless because I haven't seen a lot of that 
come out of wireless field day or mobility field day. And they also organize network field days and other field days, you know, focused on other network technologies, right? Yeah, there's a whole slew of other topics. You've got data field day, networking field day, storage field day, and uh, cloud, cloud field day, and virtualization field day. So there's a, there's a lot of different uh, verticals that tech field day tackles. A lot of great information comes out of all of these field days. And what's great is, yes, they do the live stream and uh, very soon they have the videos up online. So you can watch the videos from Mobility Field Day 2 right now if you go over to techfieldday.com slash, uh, I think, topics slash Mobility Field Day or MFD2. Actually, it's techfieldday.com slash topics slash mobility and you'll be able to see some of the vendors there. And if you, I think you click on some, you'll see the videos, but... Uh, you can also go on their YouTube channel and yeah. they have a playlist for the event. Yeah, that'll be the easiest way is go on YouTube to to see what videos were recorded. And just I, I, I look at that every once in a while just to recap of what happened. So let's talk about then NetScout. You, you saw the video, Francois, or you saw the live stream. What was your first impressions of, of NetScout and what they presented well, that, so they talked mainly about the AirCheck D2. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I think it's one of the most popular product they have for the, you know, the wireless uh, uh, suite of uh, applications they have. Um, and a lot of the delegates had one, right? Had experience with the G2 and were asking really good questions. Um, I, I've never had a G2. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know it's a really good device. Everyone's talking about it, right? Yeah. Uh, but it, it seems like it's a really good device to uh, just get a sense of what's going on in the air. Um, and you're talking yeah, about the frequency, just seeing like what number of APs um, that you see from where you're standing, uh, amount yeah. of co-channel interference, adjacent channel interference. You can see a lot of that kind of data as a, a, a big, a quick verification check right yeah without you know bringing up like how bigger applications uh, stuff you won't have on your phone right you, mm -hmm. uh, you know cci and channelization you typically you don't have that on your phone um especially an iphone yeah you're <laughs> you very, very limited detail. yeah very limited yeah. details on your mobile phone and we we would wish that our mobile phones were capable of this but they just don't have that power and flexibility at the moment now, I will say coming from Mobility Field Day 1, I was, um, there's a long backstory on this, which is um, I was handed the air check, the, the first one, the first generation air check, and that's the yellow looking device. Uh, it, it has buttons, so there's no touch screen. So this air check has been handed down f from previous, uh, since the wireless field days. And so I, I'm used to the air check I'll call it the G1 because I've used that in environments where I, I you know, go to an office and see, okay, what, what does the spectrum look like as far as how many APs am I seeing on the same channel? Um, what chat or what uh, signal strength, uh, you know, an SSID is, is shooting from. And it's a way to even identify where I've used it to, to find out where the AP is, right? I'll walk around it, uh, and get a sense of the strongest signal strength. And there was one time where I had to go look for an access point that was broadcasting a very old SSID. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but there was an SSID called Tsunami. I think it was called okay. Tsunami. And it was just allowing people to connect. And I had to find this APU. It was hidden. And I used the AirCheck G1. I, I, I narrowed down to the BSSID and just walked around trying to figure out where it was based on the strongest signal strength I got. And that's when I started popping tiles as I got close and ended up finding it. <laughs> and so that was just using the AirCheck G1 for that purpose. And they also have a, a feature called auto test. Yeah. I think you guys talked about it and it, it gives you a sense of what's going on in the environment where you are. Yeah. I think it's a, a really great way to quickly get into an environment and there's a set of tests that you're always going to run, right? Test, it's going to test the air quality. It's going to test uh, the amount of 
co-channel interference, adjacent channel interference. It's going to also connect to the SSID and then test network connectivity as well. So it's a very common test to do, especially when you're deploying wireless and you want to make sure it works. This is an easy way to delegate this this kind of uh, test and hand it off to somebody that's less experienced, maybe, and yeah. um, be like, "All right, test this out for me. I can't I, I can't be there to test it, but if you can test it for me, um, and then it'll save. I believe it saves that information, and then you could see, okay, this is what it looked like when um, when when that person stood in a specific area, for example. It'll I've run the test." I'm thinking if you get cold because uh, you know Wi-Fi sucks, <laughs> and then you're just uh, you're just there trying to figure out what's going on. Maybe that that can be the first uh, tool you can use to get a sense of you know where you need to look next. Uh, maybe something is gonna something obvious is gonna pop up right away. You know, all of the AP on channel one, <laughs> uh, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> That's a little bit extreme, but uh, it happens. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Maybe. I mean, when you yeah. first deploy, right? Sometimes those APs will will all go um, initialize on the first channel that's available in that spectrum. So either channel one or channel 36. And yeah. the, the, the air check is a great, easy way to determine that, especially for somebody who doesn't know wireless. So maybe the guy deploying or doing the install so he can quickly run an air check and, and show you this is what I see uh, uh, at this current location. And on top of that, you can see channel utilization. So when you were talking about troubleshooting and somebody gets sent out into an area, they could turn on air check and be able to see, all right, uh, if they know that these specific channels are in that room, for example, they can see the entire spectrum at a glance and be like, all right, channel one is very um, uh, congested. Yeah. Um, yeah. So everything you can do with the AirCheck D2, you can do it with like an Echo, for instance, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. You can record a lot more detail. You get that visualization though with Echo. Uh, this is more of like a check, like it, the, like the okay. name says. It's a, you're checking the air, and so you're you're gathering a lot of like the basic, um, basic checks. So you got your auto test, which will test a number of different things, and then record that. And then you could test channel utilization, and um, it'll give you a quick glance. There's a, a there's a specific section for channel utilization, and it shows you all the channels, and it gives you um, it's like a first glance look at the at the spectrum, and it yeah, will show nice. you with a with dots how many the number of APs that are on that channel. So right away you can you can see co-channel interference, and the number of dots just shows how many APs it hears on that channel. And yeah, within each like channel, like that, that's a really easy, quick, useful feature to see. Okay, I got a co-channel interference problem. And then the, the other thing too is on that same screen, you could see channel utilization. And you see both 802.11 channel utilization and also non-802.11 channel utilization. And so it's looking at that signal. And the way that the question was asked during the presentation was, well, how do you know it's it's noise, for example. How do you know it's not yeah. 802.11? And it looks at that signal and it and it decides whether or not it could decode that signal above a threshold. And so if yeah. it can't decode that signal, then it must be noise. It must be non-802.11. Okay, and it also shows the clients uh, connected, that this is connected to the network, to the Wi-Fi network. That's pretty cool. And you can also do an Ethernet test. Yeah, it's got a Ethernet port built in. I think that's a um, an awesome feature because how many times do you go into an environment and you plug in an AP and it doesn't properly come up? How do you know yeah. if it's the Ethernet port, for example? That's it's usually the DHCP server. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a common. Uh, that's funny you mentioned the, the DHCP server because uh, the DHCP and DNS they were getting hit quite a bit <laughs> at Mobility Field Day. That seems to be the common issue with wireless is that's it's DHCP. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the cable is not terminated well and you get like a hundred meg instead of getting a gig. That yeah. happens to us in that. Yeah, so I think it's it's uh it's it only makes sense to add an Ethernet test to the AirCheck G two because you want to cover yeah. all your bases and what 
kind of tool will give you that? Well, the AirCheck G2 seems to be the most um, ideal tool for that situation that covers everything at a glance and, you know, quick check, especially for someone, uh, like I said, that doesn't have quite the expertise in Wi-Fi or with networking, you could actually delegate this to somebody else to, to do these tests for you as a kind of a first cursory check. Yeah, exactly. So n now the big question. Okay, let's say you do your test, uh, you visit a facility, you do your test. How do you export the data and then share it with your coworkers, manager, customer, whoever? There, I think there's a, actually a couple of different ways you can do this. It does have a USB port. So you can export data from that port using the application that comes with AirCheck. But I think by far my favorite feature, which they go into this in uh, in the video at Mobility Field Day, was this this application called Link Live, and it's a uh, it's a cloud application which uh, gives you a dashboard of various different tests that have been performed with the AirCheck G2 and also with other tools that NetScout has. I, I mean, I'm not too familiar with. NetScout's other tools. I, I the only one I had was the AirCheck G1, but I had to return that to <laughs> because somebody else got the uh, the the next uh, you know had a hand down hand down that torch, and somebody else got to use the AirCheck, but they got the AirCheck G2, so they they got the newer version. And so I think I have the Link Sprinter. Yeah, and you can you uh, can upload those tests yeah. to Link Live. So it's called Link Live. And when you run these tests, uh, it, it knows like which device is which, right? Um, it's got a naming convention. But yeah. you push these, re these test results to the cloud. And let's say you, you did delegate this, this um, task to somebody and they needed, you needed to know whether or not it worked or maybe there's an issue. Uh, the, the, the test gets pushed up to Link Live and it has all the results there. So you could actually share this or see this with other uh, techs, uh, network engineers. Everyone can see these results. You could share it out. And um, you could do things too, like uh, I think you can text, do, take a test and text it to somebody as an example. Um, I mean, that's a good use case because if that network port doesn't work, how else do you get that test to somebody, right? You can you can uh, yeah. forward a test to, to somebody. I think this is a great way of collaborating with other people on your team, other people who are part of the, the, the process of getting connectivity up, right? So we have, and in large organizations, there's like network engineers, there's help desk, then you've got installers, um, yeah. you've got people who are running cable. Support guys too. Support people, yeah. This is a great way yeah. to share information with everyone uh, easily and be consistent rather than he hearing it by ear, for example, or, and then, or maybe it's incorrect. Maybe they, they saw something and gave the wrong information, but at least if the information comes from one of these tools, like an AirCheck G2 or a Link Sprinter, that can get uploaded to Link Live, which is cloud management, uh, a cloud management platform for these um, tests. And everyone can kind of see that. And, um, I think it's great for your field techs. Uh, I saw a direct use case for me whenever I'm handing out uh, or delegating these tasks that, okay, uh, I don't have to ask them, right? Okay, how did that test go a couple of days later? I can just see that uploaded right away into Link Live. Hey, everyone. Let's take a break to think about Wi-Fi for a moment. It's awesome when it works, right? But when it doesn't, the problem is usually a mystery. If you're sick of simply rebooting your devices and crossing your fingers every time your Wi-Fi goes down, let the Wi-Fi experts at MediGeek make the invisible visible. Their powerful diagnostic solutions visualize interference from external Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi sources and will help you configure your wireless network for maximum coverage and throughput. From a weekend enthusiast to an enterprise IT professional, MediGeek has everything you need to make Wi-Fi awesome and keep it that way. Check out their solutions at MediGeek.com to take your first step towards awesome Wi-Fi because I use Channelizer to actually visualize the spectrum whenever I'm troubleshooting an issue that seems to be coming from maybe a non-Wi-Fi source, for example. And I've also used the Insider Office as a network scanner to figure out what wireless networks are in the area what channels they're using, and which channels I should use. 
And just a little tip, you could also plug in your Wi-Spy DBX and use that with Insider Office to get some channelizer light, for example. You can see some spectrum analysis with Insider Office. Well, anyhow, if you guys are interested, take a look at metageek.com to see what you can do for your Wi-Fi network. Yeah, I really like Link Live. Uh, the the idea of sharing the uh, the result in the cloud with your team, even f even for yourself, when you go back to the office and you want to sort, you know, all your all your data and and just uh, you know do a little recap of what you've done uh, during your day on site. Um, it's a great way to to do it, and I, I think um, they were also mentioning that it will send you a notification that you know the data has been sent to the cloud and mm -hmm. if you if you answer this notification email it will become a comment yeah. to the test you've just done and and i think that is also a great addition because let's say somebody did use the aircheck g2 they they got that data collection point and that got uploaded to link live if uh, that notification comes through they could all, when they get that email they could also just take a picture with their phone and say here's where i am or this is what the ap uh, the, I see the LED blinking on this AP. So here's what it looks like. And you can upload that picture and it's part of the comments section. I think that's a, a quick way to get results in um, and get work done more efficiently. Yeah. And you can also take pictures and attach them to the email mm -hmm. and then they will become available on the cloud. So like you said, it's a great way to collab collaborate with people that are not on site and um, yeah, and share just share, share a picture of the environment. Yeah, and if everyone has everyone on that team has their own device, it, you can separate all those devices by name and be able to see. All right, that person's doing this. Uh, you know, if you've got a whole a lot of different projects going on, you could at least different differentiate between each one. And then they talked about profiles, right? Oh yeah, profiles. I think was is a great um, feature to add in there because let's say you've got different environments, right? So maybe you want to store different network credentials per SSID. Uh, it's a way to create tasks or create these tests more efficiently so you're not spending time trying to insert information for each kind of network. You could set a profile to just scan on specific channels, for example. Maybe you're only using a, a set of channels. You don't want to scan on all of them if you're not using them. Okay. Um, you can create filters to just target, you know, the SSIDs that you're looking for. Um, set different thresholds. It's uh, there's a lot you can do uh, with the profiles, and you create those using, I think, the application that you install on your computer, and then upload that via USB cable to the AirCheck. The AirCheck manager, right? They were, I think yeah. they were talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The AirCheck manager. Since I don't have an AirCheck, I I forgot what the name was called. <laughs> Yeah, they talked about something called Air Check Manager. I'm guessing that's it. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah, yeah. I I remember that's the application, Air Check Manager to manage your Air Check G2, and that's how you uh, put updates to it, and that's how you um, manage the different profiles. Now, the one thing that I I I would like to see coming out of um, Air Check uh, G2 in in higher education. Um, a lot of different environments tend to create, uh, so they have their SSIDs, and when people join the network, they have to register their devices, right? Okay. So you could register your device, and that MAC address gets gets marked as a good device that can join the network, and it's tied to a user account. Now, if, okay. you, if you're testing two SSIDs, one that's for your internal people and one that's for your guests, typically... Uh, if your MAC address is is registered, you're not going. You can't join the guest network. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do tests on both, I have to register one MAC address for the AirCheck G2. So the I have the problem. Okay, do I register the device or do I not? Because otherwise, yeah. I, I have to skip one of the SSIDs for testing. So what I asked for was a way to have another MAC address, spoof another MAC address, or have a virtual MAC address that you could save to a profile. And so now I can check, you know, Rowell internal SSID and also test one for my guest network and be able to have different MAC addresses associated to, to the profile. Or you can just get a second air check. 
<laughs> or I awesome. can give him more money and get another air check just for <laughs> visitor. <laughs> <laughs> if mm, it was that see, easy I for see, me, I to see get you're trying to go around the security. I see. <laughs> By all means, if you've got the money, go buy as many air checks as you want. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would buy. I mean, if if I could, I'd I'd buy the air check right now. I think it's um a, a really useful tool. And the biggest, also the one of the biggest improvements to air check is it's a touch screen, so you can press the buttons on the screen. Whereas the first air check, the first generation air check, is not a non touch screen, so you're just using the buttons. All right, so it looks a little bit more modern and using the new colors too. Yeah, it's got the new branding that. colors and um, there's other things that they've added to. Oh, uh, you could test 802.1x as well with with the air check. So you can set up another profile that just use certificates and um, you can install that uh, certificate to a profile using the air check manager. And then when you connect to that SSID, it'll just use the certificate you've got. That would be nice if they can include the uh, features of the air check manager into link live. So you just yeah. have like a one, you know, like one go to place to just configure and see the results and everything. Yeah, I think that was a request that was made. Um, not, I don't remember their stance on that, but yeah, it would make sense to to do it that way. So if it's plugged in, you can push um, configurations to the air check G2 without having to use a thick client on a laptop or a computer. The question is, are you always going to get internet connectivity? Uh, yeah, that's the problem, right? Sometimes when you do the checks, there is a problem and I can't connect to Link Live. <laughs> but so it'll, it, 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 just, it should save those results. And then when you connect it, either through yeah. Air Check Manager or when it, when it does connect back to the network, it should be able to send those results over. Yeah, makes sense. And so did you guys talk about the other product from uh, NetScout? I'm thinking about Air, Air Magnet or Spectrum XT. Or did you guys strictly talk about the um, AirCheck G2? Yeah, it was just about AirCheck G2 and Link Live. So surprisingly, I'm not sure what's coming out from those from those applications. Yeah, because I hear a lot of people, you know, that use uh, Air Magnet, and it's a uh, it's uh, you know comp if you compare it to Ekeho and, and all the improvements we get with Ekeho lately, uh, it seems like Aramanet is a little, a little bit behind, a little bit dated. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, you know, it would be nice to hear from them about those products and see if they are working on it, if they're improving them and see, you know, if they're planning on, on keeping them, you know? Yeah, it'd be great. It would have been great to hear more about those applications. You know, what are, what are they doing to to stay up to date in this industry um, and, and keep uh, in the line with their competitors like channel uh, MetaGeek Channelizer and also with Echo Site Survey. Are they doing anything to, to match up? Do they have new features coming out? Uh, who knows? It's uh, they didn't, uh, I don't remember them mentioning it, but it was mainly about AirCheck G2. Okay. All right, all right. So I guess we'll see. Yeah, maybe, maybe next, next yeah, next mobility field day, maybe that's when they'll come out and be like, bam, here's what we got. And the, the vendors, they use mobility field day as a way to release new features, right? Or Yeah, they do. Uh, there's been I, I, there's been some vendors that do release new features on mobility field day. So, And we'll talk about that on a different episode because there is a different vendor that, that released some new information. Talking about Cape Networks? I am. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what else can we say about AirCheck G2 other than we both want one? <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> yeah, Brendan Martin brought his AirCheck. He had it, had it there, so I, I was able to you know look at it, get a feel. Um, also, uh, Robert Boardman has one, so I've I've played with that a bit just to see what it's like in comparison to the first generation and. I think the um, the another uh, improvement they want to see is battery life. The ba the battery on the AirCheck G1 lasts a long time. You could have it powered down for a, for a couple of weeks, and when you bring it back up, it's still close to full power. And I've heard the according to some people that the AirCheck G2 slowly uh, the battery slowly drains. Um, 
and and it's, mm-hmm. it doesn't maintain its power. But uh, you might run into a situation where you haven't powered up your air check in a while, and then when you do need it, it's low on power, <laughs> or it's not, <laughs> or it's dead. So that was yeah. something that um, some people had had mentioned and wanted to see an improvement on. So if you do uh, if you do a couple of tests, uh, can you go back on the air check itself and check the results of this test? Um, you know, that's a good question. That's something I'll have to look up. Um, or we could ask somebody, uh, either Robert Boardman or Brennan, and uh, we can update the show notes on that. Okay. I wanted to know if you saw some uh, Canadian society on Brennan's uh, air check. <laughs> like, you know, maple syrup, Wi-Fi. Maple stuff like syrup. That. <laughs> the, the maple fi. Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's it about AirCheck. Uh, anything else you want to mention about NetScout and their product line? And no, I, I think I really enjoyed the uh, their videos. Uh, the link live is, uh, I think that's the thing I preferred. Uh, the the new feature that I preferred. Um, and if I have, I think if I have, uh, if I if I buy one uh, AirCheck G two one day, I'll I'll be using Link Live for sure. Yeah, and I think I you can you get a you get a light. I think you get the option of using Link Live when you purchase one of these products. So I don't think it's an extra license to have it. Yeah, I've used I, I could it be on wrong. The Link Sprinter, I have. Uh, you know, the, you can also up- upload the. Uh, actually, it does it for you automatically if you have internet mm. connection. Nice. Right on the cable, you you test automatically. You just upload it on the in the cloud, and you can go back and and view the results. Yeah, well, um, there you go. It's, it's pretty cool. It gives you the time, and so you can go back and then document do your documentation or whatever. Or if you can't remember, that's my guess. Yeah, <laughs> uh, shoot, you can't remember the the results of this test, and you can go back and then uh, you, you have everything at one place. Uh, because the Link Sprinter works with a, you don't have a screen on the device itself. It works on your phone. Mm-hmm. And then you use your phone to to trigger the test and see the results. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that Link Live is perfect for that because, yeah, you might not remember to gather those statistics or you forget, you know, something happens. Yeah, exactly. And, um, well, just to, I don't know if AirTrack G2 works this way. Maybe it would be nice. But I know the Link Sprinter, if you have PoE cable, um, the the link sprinter the unit itself will get the power from the PoE mm-hmm. and will not be using the uh, the battery inside the unit. Mm, yeah, um, that's a good feature. But what I was thinking, I think I I sent them a tweet one day. I was thinking maybe it would be cool if you have a battery internal battery, and then the PoE if you connect to PoE it would recharge the battery. Um, oh yeah, you know, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, why not? So, yeah. <laughs> It's kind of like using the tool, and at the same time, it's recharging. Or if you, if you're back at the office and you want to recharge the unit, you, instead of using USB, you can just connect it to a PoE port. That would be awesome. Maybe they can do that for the AirCheck D2 as well, right? Yeah, sounds like a feature request to me. <laughs> I don't know if it's very useful for everyone because not, not everyone useful. has a PoE cable laying around. But you know, at least when you're using it, it doesn't drain the the power. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think it should just use the power that it's actually working off of. Like if it sees it senses PoE and it's using PoE, might as well just use that as your power source. I don't know if you can recharge it, recharge the battery with PoE though. I don't know if it's technically possible. Yeah, who knows? But, but I think it's still worth requesting that feature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be a cool feature. All right, well, that's our episode on NetScout. If you guys want to see the videos, head over to the show notes. That's going to be cleartosend.net slash 87, which will link out to the the Mobility Field Day videos on the AirCheck G2 and also on Link Live. There is a video also on the tips and tricks for AirCheck G2. So if you do have one, there there are some tips and tricks to help make some processes more efficient. We didn't go into that here because we don't have an air check G2, so it doesn't, <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to talk about these tips and tricks when you don't have one, but they do go into that in, in the video at mobility field day. And I thought mo- some of these tests were actually pretty useful or not tests, but the tips and tricks were actually really useful for, for people, especially if they're doing um, 
tests at different environments where the, maybe a network profile would be the easiest way to do your your testing. But um, and also, also, uh, sorry, Roy, I just wanted yeah. to add on the NetScout website, they have an AirCheck G two demo, uh, so you can do a virtual like yeah. you can do like it's a, a virtual, virtual demo. <laughs> Yeah, virtual demo. You can click on the AirCheck G2, start it up, and click on the different features they have uh, if you want to get a sense of you know what it is. Yeah, they go through different common test cases where maybe Wi-Fi is slow, or you're trying to find a rogue access point, or maybe um, channel is overutilized, or maybe there's some sort of misconfiguration going on with your port, your your switch port to your AP, that kind of thing, or even just a misconfiguration on your your SSID. So they go through those kind of use cases as to, you know, what what could you possibly be using the AirCheck G2 for? So I think that's something to look at, especially if if you, you're not quite at that buying phase yet. Um, the virtual uh, tour or demo is a great way to get a sense of what it's like. And it, it's, it's just like using the G2 because you're just looking at the screen and going through the features. Yeah, you don't have access to every every everything, but uh, most of it you can. Yeah, we can browse through and and discover the 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 tool. Awesome. Well, that's the end of our episode. Uh, where where can people find you, Francois? And what are you working on this week? Uh, this week I'll be working on exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be working. Let's say I'll be working. <laughs> um, uh, mostly from home, but I'm going to do some testing and interesting stuff. Wi-Fi related, of course. And um, people can find me online um, uh, on Twitter at clear or Verges Francois. And uh, my website is uh, semfionetworks.com. Cool. You guys can find me online at Roel Dionisio is my Twitter handle. I haven't been that active lately. I've been pretty busy, but if you shoot me a message, I will respond. Always uh, clear to send is another account where both Francois and I are can be found. And uh, if you want to talk about you know what kind of topics you want to hear about, or um, there's something you want to uh, you know, have a question or a concern, we can answer that for you. We do have a ask a question feature on our website. If you do want to ask a question, we've got a couple of questions, but we're um, some of it requires some research, so we want to be sure we give you guys the right information. Uh, some of them are actually complex. Um, the other thing, oh, what am I working on this week? I'm doing some wireless surveys, so I do have some Wi-Fi work. I do actually have a lot of non-Wi-Fi work, unfortunately, but um, all interesting um, in the grand scheme of things. But yeah, going yeah, back to wireless work and tying it all in together, full the full stack, basically. Yeah, I think it's important as a Wi-Fi engineer to know about the rest of the network and even the rest of the you know overall infrastructure. I, I attended a meeting last week and I don't know, while I attended a meeting, I was thinking about that, like, oh my God, yeah, that's important to to understand the bigger picture and how everything is, uh, you know, work. it's working together as a flow of communications, the mm -hmm. connections and everything, yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, there was an environment that I was in where maybe the AirCheck G2 would have came in handy and it did come up to be a DHCP issue, but, um, but you, you would see people connect to wireless, although it would be kind of slow. And yeah. there was, actually, it wasn't really a DHCP issue. It was more of a, a firewall issue, which was blocking DHCP, and it had to do with uh, um, authentication roles. So if you were, you, you had like a pre-logon role, and you were able to get DHCP, but once you were authenticated, for some reason, DHCP was blocked. And the way I found that out is um, I was looking at my phone. I could see it trying to connect. I could see the the bars turning, right? And I go, well, that's kind of weird. And then eventually, a couple minutes later, it would just, it would get DHCP. So I ended up doing a uh, frame capture. I, I put up um, Wireshark and used one of those AirPCAP NX cards and tuned it to the channel that my phone was on. Then I would turn on Wi-Fi on my phone, watch it have that problem. And then when I looked at the capture, I was not seeing, um, my, my phone wanted to use an address it had already been given earlier, like okay. 10 minutes before, but I was not getting a response back from the DHCP server. So then um, I was able to figure out after a couple of digging around on the controller, it was actually a, fire, a firewall rule that blocked DHCP. 
after you were authenticated. So that took quite a bit of digging. <laughs> yeah. That's good that you found the issue. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, the hard part was finding out what blocked it. That's the, <laughs> I knew it was a D, like I wasn't getting DHCP, but why wasn't I after I had already gotten DHCP earlier? So a lot of different working pieces there, but eventually found it. So I think maybe that's where some of these tools would come in handy, like the AirCheck G2 to kind of see that right away versus me trying, all right, let me, I'm looking at my phone, I'm looking at the controller, I'm not seeing certain things, and then eventually have to pull up a frame capture and then go digging into areas where I think might be the problem. But yeah, it yeah. was uh, interesting. Well, you good, Royal. You found the issue. Yep, I, I can. I'm done for the week, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. You uh, hope you guys like this episode. Check out Net Scout um, at Mobility Field Day Two uh, on those videos. It's a really insightful video to see what Net Scout has um, coming out for AirCheck. And uh, if you guys were happy with the show and all the other episodes, please review us on iTunes. Let us know what you think. Of course, five stars are pretty good, but helps us uh, understand how we're doing on the show, what kind of topics we should still come up with. Um, we, got a lot, we get a lot of good feedback that way. Um, but anyhow, thank you guys for listening. We will see you on the next episode. Thank you, guys. Have a good week. 